the to Tory MP Neil Parrish, uh, who has actually has resigned now. Uh, he's apologised. He said it was totally, absolutely wrong of him and a moment of madness, him looking at porn in the House of Commons. Um, could this, can this be a moment of madness? Well, it, it, it was two moments of madness, really, wasn't it? The first time uh, he accidentally uh, discovered porn while looking for a certain brand of combine harvester, the class dominator, very popular in Europe, I believe, an excellent combine harvester. But when he looked it up, he was presented with something that several women MPs found offensive, they complained, and then he subsequently emerged that he'd actually been viewing porn again in a moment of madness, actually deliberately looking at porn. And I found it... When he, when he sort of fessed up and resigned, it was, I have to say... Consider it, it's a big scandal, it's a horrible chapter in parliamentary history, but he did hold his hands up eventually. It took him four days, yeah. but he was probably more full and frank about what he did than I wanted to know. Yeah. In the interests of research, I did something quite risky this morning. <laughs> I put the word dominator into my iPhone. Yes. And no porn came up. Oh. I came up with a music festival in the Netherlands, a DJ <laughs> called Dominator, yeah. a Polish exhaust maker. Excellent motorcycle from uh, the 1950s. So the point I'm making is I think you'd have to go a little bit deeper than looking up <laughs> the word Dominator to end up on a porn site in the House of Commons. Now, when I was an MP, you weren't allowed to take... Well, there weren't these devices into the Commons. My view is, to be serious, that when you're in the chamber of the House of Commons, you are there to do a job of work. And if you're not actually doing a job of work, you should be talking to your colleagues and people... I know it was a vote during the yeah, vote. Yeah. It's an opportunity to meet other members of Parliament and to do the business. And it wasn't right by any standard. You used to be a Tory MP. Can I ask you, so he's resigned for looking at porn, which, as far as I know, isn't a crime. Uh -huh. But his boss, Boris Johnson, has actually paid a fixed penalty notice and he hasn't resigned for breaking the law. Uh, uh, How does that that's work? That's interesting, uh, uh, Matt. Well, I think the pornography thing is... Is different. It's a different, and he's chosen to resign because of all the fuss yeah, he's being absolutely. made. Absolutely. I keep a diary, and in the 1990s, I kept a diary, and I came into an MP's office and found this MP looking at porn on his computer no. in his office in the 1990s, and I, that was published in my diary in the public domain, and nothing happened about it then. What so I think a scandal. That it is a scandal, and the culture does have to here, change. Here, here, here. There's no doubt of that. Is I mean, there any part of you, Matthew, Matthew and Charles, that feels sorry for him? No, because no one should be looking at porn at work. End. I don't care what people do at home, but no one should be looking at porn at work. Beginning, what, middle, and end. What about you, Charles? At a human level. Gosh, we're all human. I, I mean, I, I certainly don't sit in judgment on anybody. Yeah. But there's no doubt that he's done the right thing. Yes. It was a moment of madness. He shouldn't have done it. And also, it's brought to light the fact that the culture at the Commons really has got to... They've got to raise their game. It's, it's such change. an important and exciting job. I mean, I have a, a daughter who's in, interested in politics, who stood at the last election, and there are so many good younger people, women and men, wanting to go into politics. Let's make it a, a good environment for them to work in to do the best for the country. And that's the key to this. It has to be a place where you're answerable to the laws because we're meant to look after them and be led by them. When there's little flaws and little cracks, we lose trust, don't we? Isn't Absolutely. that the issue here? Absolutely. And that's the, the issues when it comes to things like misleading parliament, is our parliament runs on convention. It doesn't run on a, on a written constitution. So if you run roughshod over convention, you are undermining our very parliament, the, the foundations of our democracy. I wonder what more stuff. stories are going to come out of this. There's going to be just more and more, oh, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Also, clearly, the Massey Ferguson 1965 oh, 135 beautiful. is the king of tractors. <laughs> beautiful The tractor. sales are going Who through knew? the roof. You know what I mean? It's we a beautiful machine. Love a Massey. We all yeah, love a Massey. It's a gorgeous <laughs> tractor. You know, we a lot of people... You actually genuinely love your tractors, though, don't you? Oh, I would love a Massey Ferguson. So would I. Three, five. <laughs> How do you have one? Oh, no, I'm into vintage motorbikes and I'd love a vintage <laughs> tractor. Oh, we should really go to some vintage shows. Oh. I know someone in mine head, Such he's a got a vintage time. tractor, he just drives it down into the middle of town. Oh, oh. I don't blame him. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Alison, come and look at my window box sometime. <laughs> oh, I would love yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I know a thing or two about windows too, John, so don't you worry about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs>